Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our Ribbon Communication SD-WAN for the SMB webinar, which is also co-hosted by 888 VoIP and affiliate company Cloud Co-Partners. So before we dive into our presentation, I just want to go over a few quick housekeeping items. The line will remain muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have any questions, please use the questions tab of your control panel. Jim O'Loughlin, our presenter from Ribbon, and Jess Wicklinsky from Cloud Co Partner will answer your questions at the end of the webinar. Additionally, we will be sending up a follow-up email after the webinar within the next few days that will include a recording of this webinar, some more information from Ribbon about SD-WAN, and contact information for both Jim and a contact at Cloud Co Partner. So if you don't get all of your questions answered today, we will be reaching out to you that way. And we can also reach out to you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Jim so that we can get our presentation started. Thanks, Danielle. And uh, welcome everybody. I appreciate you taking this uh, hour to spend with us to understand what the Ribbon and Cloud Co uh, offering is gonna be for SD-WAN. To start off with the agenda, um, we'll discuss a little bit about what the actual offering so solution is and focus on the target customer as the webinar title is uh, SD-WAN for the SMB. Um, we'll get into product information uh, and we'll get into some use cases, which the key thing I think for any of these applications is, you know, what business problem are you trying to solve and for whom are you trying to solve it? Uh, I think that becomes a critical part and ultimately your success in adopting a feature like SD-WAN and being able to sell it to the to your customer base. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to go to market and then uh, finally, you know, just touch on customer qualification and objection handling. Uh, although honestly, you know, during the whole conversation, I think uh, customer qualification will become part of it based on the applications that we talk about. <clears throat> so, SD-WAN, um, it's a very highly talked about concept. Uh, it's, you know, you've heard a lot of people probably say, ask three different companies what SD-WAN is and they'll give you three different answers. And, you know, there's some truth to that. And, and again, I kind of fall back into what I said before, which is what's the real business problem you're trying to solve? Because at the high level, SD-WAN is software defined wide area networking, which is, essentially giving you the ability to change or reconfigure a wide area network on the fly. Uh, but again, it, it needs to solve a business problem. So from our perspective, we look at it as giving you, a, as you say here, a layer of control over your business applications and voice. So giving your end users the ability to have control over the data flow in and out of their locations but in a way that's going to give a better experience for their, whether it be their users, their employees, or just their business in general. Uh, and it's really about, you know, making sure your mission critical applications are performing at its optimum using the broadband connections into your building. In addition to focus on things like business continuity, which, you know, that's been a problem that's been solved by telecommunications for decades. The ability to keep a business up and running when there's some kind of a uh, disruption or failure event. So <clears throat> there's, there's many vendors in the SD-WAN ecosystem, and the majority of them have been focused on the enterprise, solving the problem for MPLS replacement and uh, the idea of interconnection of branch offices. Uh, still an important business and an important model. Uh, you'll see many of these companies appearing in the, in the space of um, the large enterprise. They sell directly to large enterprise. They sell through service providers. Uh, and, you know, they all provide a, a solid product. Uh, when we developed our SD-WAN solution, we looked at it from the perspective of small enterprise and small business. Uh, the pricing of the traditional SD-WAN solution was typically much higher and, and not supportable by the application requirements of the small business. Uh, and the applications were different. You know, if you look at today's business environment, uh, for example, so... Uh, Ribbon Communications, I'm actually uh, part of the acquired company, Edgewater Networks. Edgewater Networks was a company of 80 people with one headquarters. So we'd have 30 or 40 people in headquarters and 40, 30 to 40 people or more in remote locations. We didn't have a need for having 
remote locations going back to headquarters, we had a need to communicate with cloud applications like Office 365 or Salesforce.com. So from an application perspective, most companies in the small to medium enterprise uh, business segment are looking for prioritization of real-time traffic. You know, you have a broadband connection, you wanna make sure the experience for real-time sensitive traffic is, is a high quality experience. Uh, the service quality in general being strong, um, resiliency and business continuity, which are really critical things when you think of the fact that if somebody depends on interacting with the outside world through data or voice uh, for their business and they lose an hour of time, you know, if uh, a doctor's office can't make appointments, an attorney's office can't get on a conference call, that's real money that's lost. So business continuity is critical. Uh, but this all has to be done at a price point that a small business can support. And you know, when I say small business, it could be an attorney's office with five people. It could be a you know, small manufacturing facility of 50 people. But the point being is that you wanna make it in a way that it definitely fits in the business needs of your customer, but also uh, enables you as a, as a service provider or a, a solution provider to provide a, a service that you can make money off of as well. So just to step through some of these needs and requirements, um, you know, the enterprise has a large corporate WAN that's actively managed. Small business, it's a few locations. Some are remote home offices. Some are, say, storefronts. Uh, one may be a headquarters location, but they don't have a sophisticated network requirement to connect those buildings together. And they're really not in the space of... Uh, of having the IT facilities to do that. Uh, by the same token, they do still need connectivity. They need res uh, assured, um, uh, consistent connectivity and reliant, reliable connectivity. Uh, so they, they still have some of the same business needs, but it's more focused on communication and broadband functionality. Uh, so we took that from, we looked at that application set and said, okay, what, what features can we provide that will focus on solving that business problem, but also giving the users um, functionality that's easy to manage and really is gonna impact their business. Uh, so we have three different applications under our SD-WAN umbrella. The first one is Stateful SIP Transfer, which basically using dual WAN connections uh, and, and for the majority of the discussion, we're going to assume that a user has dual WAN connections, although with some of the functionality, it can be done over a single, a single broadband connection. But Stateful SIP Transfer essentially gives you the ability to transfer between broadband connections live calls. So if you have two broadband connections, A and B, if A fails or degrades, you can transfer that call over to the broadband connection B without dropping the call. Uh, very important from a con uh, continuity perspective. The second feature is business policy control. Business policy control essentially gives you the ability to prioritize your applications based on how you need them uh, in your business. So this can vary based on companies. One company, voice may be the priority. Another company, uh, order management may, applications may be a priority. A third one, IoT applications may be a priority but each customer will be able to prioritize those applications. And the third feature was what we call survivability, or some people will call it local survivability, which gives you, in the event of a network outage, the ability to essentially emulate a PBX feature set where if you're selling a hosted voice solution and you have a failure of the connection to the cloud, you can still do desk-to-desk -desk dialing and have some basic inter-office communication. Now let's take a few minutes to go a little more in depth into each of these features. So as I mentioned, stateful SIP transfer is taking, is, is basically giving you the ability to move voice over IP calls from one, can, one WAN connection to another. And it's in two conditions. One is if the WAN connection is degrading so it used to, in the, in the old world, if you had an edge mark on site, you had basically um, uh, the ability, if you had a failure in one link, you transfer everything to the other link, you would drop calls, you'd have to reestablish. 
Now we are actively monitoring each of your broadband connections for which one is a better performing connection. So again, if you have calls all focused on broadband connection A, and the quality of the connection of A starts to degrade, and therefore the quality of the user experience begins to degrade, we have the ability to then transfer those calls actively over to connection B. Uh, and in addition, if link A completely fails, then obviously that definitely affects the performance of the voice quality. So we would li it live transfer those calls over to connection B. Uh, this is a huge benefit for a few reasons. One is if calls are disrupted and you're an outbound uh, company talking to customers, uh, Losing a customer call is never a good experience for, your, for that, your customer's customer. But in addition, the IT director who decided to bring your services in or who's brought you in as an integrator is going to look at this as a huge advantage because if there in fact is a broadband outage and the IT director obviously would know that, but the users don't need to know that. As long as the services are still running and still uh, performing as expected, the IT team or the office manager or whoever is responsible for you know, buying and managing the telecommunications at the site will be aware of the outage and they'll be able to uh, move forward with the business of trying to resolve that outage without receiving 10, 15, 20 calls from unhappy users. And more importantly, they provided a bulletproof, resilient environment where business is not disrupted by a single point of failure. Basically, how we do this is the edge mark is going to continuously monitor the link quality. And there's about 110, 120 different um, metrics that an edge mark looks at for calls and call quality during a regular phone call. And we do that testing every 10 seconds uh, for every call. And that's a core component of the network edge orchestration application, the core uh, edge water or ribbon edge application. Uh, but now with SD-WAN, we're monitoring it from a different perspective. We're looking at it from a performance of thresholds. So if we see an event threshold exceeding, for example, uh, packet loss or other, um, other effective voice affecting or real-time affecting um, metrics exceeding a threshold, we're going to basically tell the edge or the edge mark is going to, to switch the calls from one link to the other. Uh, and it takes about one to three seconds. So the the time for that change is is minimal there may be a blip in the conversation but it's short enough that that user will not realize that or will not think a call is dropped and the conversation will continue as normal uh, the the edge mark will then vo uh, monitor those calls and monitor those links so that if you prefer your voice to be on link a when link a's performance is back up to the level it needs to be the calls will then be transferred back but this, this monitoring will also happen for new calls. So if you've, if you've flipped all your voice over to link B, any new calls initiated will not start to look for A and then move to B. They will default to B and then only switch back to A when in fact uh, the, the quality of the, the A link is, is um, up to standard. So <clears throat> again, as we talked a little bit before, the critical nature of a dropped call, if, you're, if your customer base is local government, obviously losing any kind of a call in a police, fire, ambulance environment is, is critical, and you may not even get that call back. Um, <clears throat> but if you're talking about medical, legal, educational, same thing. Customers don't want to drop calls. If, if you have a situation where you have a call center, and the call center, in fact, is you're talking to one agent, you lose the call, the user dials back in, they have to restart the process again to connect to potentially a different agent. So losing a call is, is always gonna be cost of, uh, costly from a business, from a customer experience perspective, from a cost of reconnecting perspective, from a dissatisfied customer uh, perspective. So if you have the ability to launch a service that will give you re, uh, redundancy or bulletproof connections between two separate broadband connections. That's always going to be a preferred environment for an end user. Uh, and again, the same thing for inbound calls. Uh, somebody calls in to talk to a business, you don't necessarily know who they are, so you won't even be able to return the call. And because they lost the call, they may not come back. All this results in, in again, unhappy customers and potentially lost revenue for the business. <clears throat> The second feature 
is focused on business policy or what we call layer seven routing. This gives the edge mark the ability to route calls, prioritize, I should say, call, not calls, but uh, applications based on URL, IP address, or port. And typically, we would do this anyway in the voice environment from the, just a traditional network edge orchestration application where we prioritize voice over data. This expands that capability to creating multiple queues for you to prioritize any real-time application or just any application. So, you know, real-time applications are typically the one discussed because they're the most sensitive to any kind of disruption. But if you have key business applications like an SAP or a Salesforce, you could prioritize those as well from a performance perspective. And what this is going to do is just like I talked about from the, the Stateful SIP transfer, you will be able to prioritize those services so that if there's a, a bandwidth constraint, if you have a hundred meg connection and for whatever reason, somebody is doing some non-critical real time, such as Pandora, music uh, streaming, video streaming, whatever that may be, you can prioritize applications over those, um, I'll call them secondary or less mission critical applications. Or you can prioritize things based on not just applications, but locations. So for example, if you have a customer who has a customer presentation center or a customer boardroom where they do customer presentations, you may want to prioritize that site, that, that uh, IP address in that location and that in that office as primary uh, to uh, override or to get priority over the rest of the data coming in and out of the building for a critical customer presentation. If you're in a medical environment, you might, may want to prioritize voice services for the emergency room and data services for the labs and say x-ray technicians and, and people with cre critical data needs, but deprioritize, let's say back office business accounting, non-medical critical applications. But what this effectively does is it'll, it makes sure that the, based on the bandwidth available, those applications get priority. And even to the point where you may be able to turn uh, certain applications into a basically best effort environment where, again, I mentioned Pandora. You may have a business where you know, employees are allowed to listen to music. They've, they're streaming music into their, uh, into their computers. That may get dropped off in the time frame of uh, critical congestion. Uh, and this this bandwidth is managed across a, a 2900, which is the device we use for the SD-WAN uh, functionality, uh, handles this capability up to a full gigabit of speed. So if you're running a gigabit, you might not have this issue. But if you're starting to see congestion because of network issues or something else, and that gigabit com uh, gets constrained, you're still going to have that capacity all the way down to if you're only running a 50 meg circuit. Obviously the benefits uh, I think are clear in the sense that from a service provider perspective, you wanna make sure that any services you're offering are prioritized. So voice services, if you're offering a collaboration service, you wanna make sure that those services are prioritized at the WAN level so that uh, users are getting the best experience possible. You don't wanna run into a situation where there's congestion and suddenly um, they're having a poor performance. Uh, you know, I've run into this myself. You know, I'm sitting in a home office right now and I have a, um, a multi-band wireless environment where for whatever reason, my laptop connected to my two and a half gig connection, it caused all sorts of voice and audio issues on a, on a uh, webinar. I had to go back, I had to, during the webinar, switch over to five gig. These are the things that users should not have to deal with during a presentation. Um, but it also allows you again to manage these these critical uh, prioritizations, either by you, the service provider, giving them a prepackaged capability or letting the user manage those prioritizations based on them picking the applications that are most critical, or it can be in a partnership and you can work together. The third application or the third component of our SD-WAN capability is what we call survivability. And uh, this is basically, this is a functionality that we've had in the Edgemark for a while but from a business assurance and a service assurance perspective, it's, it's really critical uh, because it gives you a few application options. One is failover to analog. So if you have a customer who say is just using a single broadband connection and that broadband connection fails, you can have that, that user using a, a 2900A, which has analog ports off the back end, they can fail over to 
POTS lines. So again, mission critical, you have a school, school wants to make sure 911 is always available, broadband fails, they can still pick up the phone, the 911 traffic can get prioritized to that POTS line and the call will go through. Uh, it also gives the ability during a broadband failure to do station to station dialing. So you've got a location that has 30 or 40 phones in it, broadband connection fails, you still want sales to be able to call accounting in building connections. Uh, simple things like uh, if you're if you're using analog services for door buzzers or overhead paging, you still want that capability to work. So just because there's a broadband failure doesn't mean that you have a total system failure. Uh, and obviously, if you're selling hosted PBX services, you want to make sure that you can give them all the, the same functionality that they were used to having in a PBX without the worry that, oh, this is cloud-based and therefore it's riskier. So as we talk about you know, SD-WAN and, and smart, what we call smart bonding, the idea that you have two WAN connections into a building. Uh, these WAN connections don't have to be from the same service providers. In fact, many times it's recommended that you have either diverse service entrance, if you have that ability as a service provider, or you have diverse carriers because if there's a network failure from one carrier, that user can, can be backed up by the, the second carrier. But either way, the idea that you're, you're managing that traffic in, a, in an intelligent way. So based as you can see in this slide right now, the traffic is running on WAN 1, and uh, the blue traffic is the priority. If, in fact, there's a service interruption on WAN 1, you can now see that the priority traffic has moved over to WAN 2. Now, WAN 2 may also have non-priority traffic on it already, but the key thing is that your priority traffic that was having issues on WAN 1 is now going to be the priority traffic on WAN 2. And once that solution is, is resolved, then you're back to the primary connection and prioritizing on that main connection. A couple of reasons why this, this switch and switch back become critical. One may be dependent upon what that WAN connection is. If that second WAN connection is a lower bandwidth connection, so let's say you have a gigabit connection and a 100 meg connection, you may not want to move all your traffic over to the 100 meg connection because clearly if you were supporting a full gigabit, uh, you're not going to be able to transfer all traffic over. So you want to prioritize what you do send over. Uh, the other piece may be that you're using LTE as a backup. So if you're using LTE as a backup and LTE charges you per, per bit, right? There's a cost, a usage-based cost for that. That user is going to want to only transfer the critical traffic over. And when that, that outage or issue is, is resolved, they're going to want to move that traffic back to WAN 1, uh, minimizing their cost on the LTE side. And the way this is managed is, and this is the beauty of the partnership that uh, 888, CloudCo, and Ribbon have together. This is all managed through the Edgeview Service Control Center. And Edgeview is an application that basically, if you, if you have Edgemarks today, you probably have some exposure to uh, what Edgeview is. But essentially, Edgeview is our... Uh, cloud management software. And this is the application that speaks to all the edge marks in your network and keeps tabs on real-time traffic, real-time analytics. Uh, and typically it's a, you know, it's a very robust application. And if you're deploying a, a very, very large scale network, EdgeView is a fairly easy to set up and maintain yourself. Uh, however, if you're just dipping your toe into the space or you don't have the facilities or the ability to manage your own EdgeView, you can go to CloudCo and CloudCo will then offer you EdgeView as a hosted service. And the beauty of this is the, the CloudCo team is very well versed in the application. In addition to the value of, of EdgeView, which I won't get into, it's a separate discussion around things like templates and uh, zero touch provisioning and simplification of operation. Uh, the SD-WAN capability is inherent in the CloudCo offering as well. So basically you can turn up one, two, three sites of SD-WAN using CloudCo's EdgeView application and not incur the, the upfront cost you would normally have to in, the, in setting up an EdgeView. But the reason why this is critical is EdgeView is how you're managing all these applications. It's your portal into which applications get prioritized. It's your end users portal into seeing how they're prioritized. So as you can see from these graphs, you can see the, the usage graph of based on the WAN connections on the top slide, they're a little bit small to see, but the top slide showing you the WAN 1, WAN 2, and the total throughput. Uh, 
when two is showing the different, I'm sorry, uh, picture two there is showing the prioritization of each queue. So to see what kind of bandwidth you're seeing coming through on the high priority queues and the low priority queues. Uh, and ultimately the, on the bottom, it's showing you the, the, the peak performance and the peak calls coming through the site. Uh, so it's giving you a lot of very critical data. In addition to just the SD-WAN control, it's giving you a lot of visibility to what that site is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So just to get into a couple of use cases and a couple of, of um, uh, applications where, you know, again, these technologies are great. It's, it's cool to have great net, network technology, but if it doesn't solve a business problem and, and it's not in an environment that's going to help your customer either save money or make money, they're not going to really be interested. And, and the whole point of this conversation becomes mute, uh, moot. So the first case, the most critical case, I believe, is business continuity. You know, voice communication is often the lifeblood of customer interaction. And, you know, I think we've, we, I kind of covered this application a little bit prior. Uh, if you're doing a lot of heavy phone conversation, if you're doing a lot of voice interaction with customers over the phone, disruption is costly. It's costly from a customer satisfaction perspective. It's costly from a revenue perspective. If you're in a business that bills hourly or has, you know, if you're uh, managing a plumbing service and you need somebody to dispatch, all these things are tied to whether or not you're fully utilizing your resources in the field and fully get it, you know, maximizing the revenue into that business. So two things come out of this. One is it gives you the ability, if you are selling broadband services, to sell a second broadband connection to that user, but also sell them a second broadband connection that is managed intelligently. So by using stateful SIP transfer and application prioritization, you can generate revenue from the customer by selling them a second broadband connection. You can generate revenue from the customer from selling them SD-WAN. But more importantly, the cost of these things can very easily be justified in the fact that, uh, again, I mentioned the law office. If a lawyer is charging $250 an hour and they lose voice services uh, for 20 minutes to an hour, and five lawyers aren't on the phone, that was a $1,200 cost to that business. So immediately you're talking about something that's very easily cost justifiable of one, one hour failure might be able to pay for a, a year's worth of broadband and a second one hour failure could easily pay for the SD-WAN application. So from a sales perspective, the ROI of these services it's not going to prove out for everybody, but for those that have mission critical applications, I guarantee you, you're going to find that they're very receptive to the the price fa uh, the, the the price scale of what this application costs, but more importantly, the value to their business. Uh, and as we mentioned before, the in addition to some of the soft savings of, for example, the the office manager or IT manager who's able to uh, avoid the headache of 15 users calling to complain that the voice services went down whereas that manager can resolve those issues without the users knowing, and perhaps at the end of the quarter report can let them know, we had three outages this, this quarter, none of you knew about it because of the, the great resiliency we put into the network. An even more mission critical application is in the contact center. And basically, I don't believe there's any business out there uh, that generates more money on the phone than a contact center. And when you have a failure in a contact center, whether it be 10 agents or 1,000 agents, it means money to whoever you're working the contact center for, whether it's your own business or whether you're, you're supporting third-party businesses. And again, in this case, there's two factors that really come into play here. One is the stateful SIP transfer, uh, the ability to not lose calls and not have issues around um, revenue loss, customer satisfaction, and just a poor consumer experience. And the other is all call centers run off of CRM applications. And if that CRM application is in the cloud, you want to make sure that that CMR, CRM application is, in addition to the voice, prioritized to your best link so that you don't have, you know, we've, I'm sure we've all been on calls with uh, customer service teams where they'll say, oh, you got to hold on a second. My system is slow today. If that's caused by the network, then the IT people have something to answer for. So by giving them the ability to, in congestion and in, in events, move that traffic from link A to link B, that becomes mission critical as well, right? So now you've, you're not only having a high quality experience over the phone with voice, and especially with other contact centers now, many contact centers are offering voice, chat, 
and other interactive uh, capabilities, you can take all of those things and prioritize them over the, the typical business day to day. These things absolutely turn into uh, a solid ROI of, uh, you know, Mr. Customer, what does one hour of failure mean to your business? Uh, and again, I think that one of the key applications of the, the key value points of the way that CloudCo and Riven have partnered over this application is uh, the SD-WAN application is a flat price and we don't regulate, we don't charge based on bandwidth. Some of the other uh, SD-WAN companies will tell you there's a one price for a 10 meg connection, there's another price for a 100 meg connection, and there's another price for a, a gig connection. For this, for our environment, it's all based on uh, one single cost without uh, differentiating between bandwidth. It simplifies it for your customers and it definitely makes it more of a, a easy case, business case to prove out. Uh, one more application just to talk about is a, an application that's growing and growing fast is industrial sensors or IoT applications. Uh, this is a case where it might not be intuitive as to uh, why you would need to prioritize this data. But in this in a case of an IoT application, if that IoT application is monitoring, let's say refrigeration warehouses, and there's a condition where the warehouse is, is um, uh, refrigeration has failed, there's a tremendous amount of money that, that will be lost if those refrigerators go above a certain temperature. All food in those refrigerators will be thrown out because they're, they're violating health codes because they, didn't, they weren't maintained in a uh, uh, frigid environment. Uh, so in this case, although IoT does not require a tremendous amount of data, you wanna make sure that IoT data is coming through at all times, prioritized on the right link. Uh, and again, the ROI there is if you have a refrigeration warehouse filled with $100,000 worth of, of poultry or meat products, and uh, there's a failure, it's very easy to justify protecting $100,000 worth of products daily versus a monthly cost of an SD-WAN and a second broadband connection. Uh, it's in that case, it's a perfect marriage of business continuity, uh, revenue protection, and uh, enabling you to generate additional revenues for customers in a way that you can actually help them run their business better. So some of the go-to-market strategies we see in the space are basically, you know, what we're talking about is, is a subscription application, right? So uh, the, the components of our SD-WAN solution are an edge mark, which goes at your customer site, which 888 VoIP provides the edge marks, and it's edge view and the SD-WAN application, which is provided by CloudCo. So between the two partners, um, it's very easy to get going with this space because the, the edge mark is a mid $200 device if you're looking at a 2900E. And the application, uh, which I, I won't get into pricing, that's, I'll let CloudCo cover that, but the application is very, very affordable considering what the, uh, the capabilities we're providing. So the key thing is from a go-to-market opportunity, this is something you could sell to your customers for a low upfront cost and a solid monthly uh, revenue perspective. Uh, and basically you can sell it as a managed service assurance application, a business continuity application. There's, there's multiple ways to tag it, but uh, it's a great way to create uh, cash flow positive revenue from the get-go because there's, there's no major investment that needs to be made by you, the partner, the CloudCo partner, to get this application up and running. CloudCo's made the investment already to build the data center. They've got the technical people. All the heavy lifting has been done already. This is purely a, a subscription application from your perspective, which then you can turn around and provide as a subscription application to your, your customer. So, and again, I think we've, we've covered the managed service assurance component, but that's typically where we're going to the market with that message that it's, basically a resiliency application. It's a business continuity application that allows you to provide this, whether it be a standalone application to prioritize other company services and, and voice over the, where you're providing an over the top management of those services. Uh, for example, if your customer is running Vonage services and you're an, an integrator or even a, a competitive service provider, you could actually install an edge mark and the, an SD-WAN service on top of that in order to give them a better performance of that Vonage and other data services, which then gives you a foot in the door to ultimately take over that uh, hosted PBX business um, down the road as it, once you've proven yourself with their mission critical things. 
Um, or you can bundle this as a, a value add to your current hosted PBX or, or UCAS environment by simply providing an uplift charge by the fact that it is you're giving them a, a completely resilient, redundant environment, uh, which you know it's been proven by many, many studies that customers are definitely willing to pay more for a, a bulletproof environment. This kind of covers the, uh, from an architecture perspective, one too many. Uh, from an architecture perspective, it's fairly simple. You put the edge mark on site, and in this case, we're looking at a 2900 or a 2900A, uh, and which has two broadband connections. That broadband connection can be uh, two typical broadband connections, or it can be a, a, it can be two LTE connections as well. But in typical environment, if it's LTEs involved, you have one standard wireline broadband and one wireless broadband connection. Uh, the communication is, um, the edge view is not in the path of the communication. So basically the link is from the edge mark to the service provider cloud for the typical internet connection. And then the edge mark communicates through a, a, a secure link back to the edge view, which is sitting at uh, CloudCo's data center. So basically the environment is, um, is solid, it's non-disruptive from the user service perspective, but because of where the edge mark is placed in the customer prem, which is right at the edge of their network and right at the edge of the service provider network, the edge mark has the ability to manage, monitor, control, all bandwidth coming in and out of the building, which is how we're able to do things like traffic shaping, uh, security, uh, we didn't touch on, and we're not going to get into the security components, but the fact is it is, it is a uh, secure firewall device as well. But it puts the, it, it gives you the ability to do all the SD-WAN capabilities right there at the edge of the network at the customer site. There's no, uh, most SD-WAN providers, if not all other SD-WAN providers, require a core concentrator in a network somewhere. Within the EdgeMark uh, architecture, all the SD-WAN capabilities, all the SD-WAN functionality is done at the edge. It's managed and uh, dictated by the edge view, uh, but it does not require the edge view interaction. So for, for some reason you lose connectivity to edge view, you don't lose the ability to keep the edge view or the edge mark up and running. But the edge mark is doing all the traffic shaping, all the, all the uh, traffic policing to make sure that the, the right traffic is getting prioritized. So there's no need for uh, links to a core concentrator. Um, which which saves considerable amount of money in other aspects of, of deploying the service. But from an ease of use, it just means that all you need to worry about is the customer site. Uh, and again, this slide just goes over some of the capabilities that by inherently, when you have our SD-WAN service, you also have underlying it is the, uh, the network edge orchestration uh, application, which basically gives you the ability to simplify and make your installations for just general voice and data more efficient. It allows you to eliminate truck rolls because EdgeView gives you visibility and the ability to resolve issues from the knock as opposed to sending a truck out to the customer site, uh, which typically results in a much better customer experience and customer satisfaction and uh, definitely helps in renewals and churn reduction. So ultimately the benefits to you and the customer are, uh, based on our partnership with CloudCo and 888, you now have the ability to offer SD-WAN without requiring a core network of your own, without deploying uh, concentrators. All you need to do is basically manage or have a partnership with CloudCo, have visibility into the edge or connect to their edge view and then deploy edge marks on site. So it's a very simple, very uh, low cost, low, I call it low speed bump way to get into uh, the SD-WAN business. And it's a great way to differentiate between yourself, between you and competitors. Uh, if you're out there competing with the, with the big carriers, you can offer com you know, services that are on the same level. If you're competing with other service providers and other integrators, you may have the advantage because you're the only one providing SD-WAN, whereas they don't you know, they're not aware of these capabilities that are out there. Uh, but the key thing is it's allowing you to get into the SD-WAN business with very, with little or no investment up front, uh, and, but really getting off the ground uh, quickly with the, uh, the cloud code team. Uh, from the customer perspective, you know, I think we've covered it, but basically 
you're going to give the customer a very bulletproof network experience, a very solid customer experience when it comes to real-time services, and when it comes to business continuity and law and preventing them from losing business due to data failure. It's, uh, that's a huge advantage. Uh, these, some of these slides, which you know, I think you guys will be able to get access to these slides, goes over some of the discussions that you would have with your uh, end customer. You could even build these slides into the discussion point for your salespeople to talk to the end customer you know, as to why they want managed service assurance. As you can see here, the bullet points are security, quality, and problem resolution. Uh, these are the things that uh, the Cloud Code team can work with you to help develop as a solution. And I'll tell you that the message definitely um, uh, definitely is, is well received by end users when it comes to um, uh, network protection and business continuity, uh, especially because, you know, typically the, the customer base that CloudCo works with is sitting in a space where you are the trusted advisors, right? The customers look to you for solutions and look to you to help them solve business problems. You're not the big tier ones that are, are not really able to spend the time with them to understand their business. You, you understand their businesses and you understand where they need to be and, and how to get there. So uh, just a, a kind of a final slide before we get into questions. Uh, you know, who are the ideal candidates for this? Uh, anybody who needs data backup or you know, network backup solutions. And, and that's a fairly large group of people. Uh, and of course, it's critical to, to determine which of your um, what your target is because you don't like anything. If a customer doesn't really see the need for a service, you don't want to spend a lot of time selling them something they don't need. But when it comes to backup and resiliency, that's something that most businesses today are looking for. Uh, anybody that's very heavily dependent on voice services, uh, and again, voice services with SD WAN at a high price, they're willing to do other things to get around. The, any kind of issues they may have. But at a very reasonable, marketable price, they're definitely going to willing, be willing to have the conversation from a simplification perspective. Um, and the other piece is they, they want dual WAN connections, right? Anybody who determines that they want to have um, a better bandwidth connection, or maybe they can't get the bandwidth they need out of one link, so they want to use two links. There's all sorts of use cases today about um, you know, dual bandwidth being a, uh, a critical need for business. And as you can see on the bottom, some of the things we've covered already, which is, you know, what are the, the business types that are, are uh, that would be targeted for this? Uh, but, you know, overall, SD-WAN is a buzzword. SD-WAN is something that everybody talks about, but a lot of people aren't fully aware of what it is. We approach it from the perspective of you as a service provider need to provide something that helps your customer solve a business problem. And if we can help you do that, then our SD-WAN service is really going to is really going to be a great solution for you out in the market. Uh, not just because of the functionality and the capabilities, but because of the way CloudCo has all put it together in a very easy, simple to get on board application environment. Um, all that together, um, you know, if you talk to some providers and ask them how long it took them to get an SD-WAN network going, they will tell you it took six months from installation of the core concentrators from evaluation of the network resources into the core concentrators. I mean, it's there's just a long list of things you need to do for traditional SD-WAN solutions. With this SD-WAN partnership that we have here, uh, you could literally have SD-WAN up and running as fast as 888 could ship you a device. So uh, with that, I think, uh, uh, Danielle, I think that's um, all the slides. So if we wanna open it up to questions. Wonderful. And just you know, to reiterate what I said at the beginning of the presentation, we are going to send a follow-up email. So you've heard Jim mention CloudCo partner up, but quite frequently throughout the presentation. We will have contact information in that follow-up so that you can reach out to both Jim and Jeff from CloudCo partner. So it looks like we have a couple questions here. Um, and we'll start off. Uh, the first question is, uh, does the phone register from when a failover to secondary WAN happens? Yeah, so uh, the the edge mark is essentially a uh, it's it's an enterprise session border controller with a back to back user agent in it. So the phone can register to the edge mark, or the phone can register to the core SBC in the network. Uh, one of the challenges we faced in Stateful SIP transfer when we first uh, started building the application was the <clears throat> was the registration issue. Um, 
if you're in the middle of a call, the call drops and you try to reinitiate the call from a different IP address from a different WAN connection, it was causing the uh, it was the registration was getting challenged or the reinvite was getting challenged. So the way we solve the problem is we're actually doing a an internal transfer from the phone. And what that's allowing us to do is maintain the security of the uh, of the, the SIP call whilst uh, transferring the call. Basically, it looks like the call is being transferred from um, uh, from the end user at the uh, at the enterprise site. So um, so we did solve the registration issue so that the network is not thinking that they were getting a spoof call from uh, with wrong credentials. All right, perfect. On to our next question. How does the soft switch know there has been a failover if WAN 1 has one public IP address and WAN 2 has a second public IP address? Well, again, I think that's kind of an answer from the last question, which is as the uh, as we reinitiate the call or transfer the call, uh, basically you can get um, the, the, uh, the, the phone is registering. I mean, let me back up. The phone is doing a, a re-invite or a transfer from the uh, from the, the user end, and then once that is uh, that re that transfer is initiated, it resyncs up with the soft switch. Um, for the for the whoever initiated that call, we can get into a much more um, graphic explanation of how that works if we want to have a follow up conversation because it requires some um, some slides that show exactly how the the SIP call flow works. But essentially, you know, we've tested this across uh, Broadsoft and other uh, soft switches that uh, it does, it's fully aware of what's going on. I know that's not the, the depth of technical answer you're looking for, but I think I'd probably prefer to have one of the engineers give you the full details. All right, perfect. And before we get to our next question, please feel free to have the questions to keep coming in. So, you know, we do have 13 minutes left. So if you have any more that Jim or Jeff can answer, please send those in. Um, the next question is going to be for Jeff from CloudCo. Um, does CloudCo have a price sheet with all of the items required? Thanks, Danielle. Um, yeah, I do have a pricing sheet that I can review with each of the partners, send something out to you. Uh, go over the onboarding uh, with CloudCo, um, what services we offer as a company, and go through that with each of you. All right, wonderful. And the last question that we have for now is, can we also get some more use cases for this? Sure. Um, like I said, we can definitely provide you some of the use cases we've discussed here. Uh, if you have specific customers or, or applications and you want to uh, suggest them our way, we could definitely help you build the use cases for it. Uh, if it's tied to a specific industry or, or a specific um, uh, vertical, we could definitely talk about that. But we do have definitely various use cases we can uh, help you put together from a marketing perspective. Great, and then here we have one more. Can we host the view at our own data centers or do we have to use CloudCo? So EdgeView is an application. Um, Cloud Co hosts EdgeView, and then you have access to a segmented version uh, of EdgeView. So basically, it's essentially your EdgeView. Uh, you know, you 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 could theoretically deploy your own EdgeView. Uh, part eight 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 could help you so uh, get your own EdgeView. Uh, but typically, there's a threshold in where that that makes sense from a cost perspective, for the number of deployments you're going to have. The the way CloudCo has deployed the application, EdgeView is segmented and secure for each user. So there's no visibility. You see only your customers, and uh, you have con full control over your customer base, but it's very secure against anyone else. So it's a, it's a very secure environment. Um, but I would suggest that, you know, talk to your 888 people as to the, your 888 sales rep as to the best way to, um, to deploy the service. But uh, again, I, I'm an advocate of the way CloudCo is doing it because the amount of um, upfront cost and investment goes away that you would have to do if you deployed this your own. All right, and it looks like we don't have any more questions at this time. So if you, you know, with that, we're probably gonna wrap up our webinar. If there are any additional questions, please reach out to either Jim, Jeff, or your 888 VoIP sales rep, and they can answer any other questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. All right, that would be it for today. And thanks everybody for joining.
Yes, thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate you taking the time with us today. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you.